Good afternoon. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be examining, looking over today. Nothing too deep, but uh, please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we will be considering today. Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Be a Berean, okay? Don't just sit there on your duff. All right? And besides, read along with me. Because the brain goes faster than the mouth and sometimes the mouth than the brain. So please, follow me along. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, in the authorized version of the Scriptures. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Finally, my brethren... Rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed it's not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Dogs. You know, the adulteress will hunt a man with a piece of bread. You know, come here, Bucci, come here. Jump down, <laughs> jump down, spin around. Stand up, stand, sit down, stand up, sit down. Like a lot of Christians experience yesterday in the uh, phallus houses. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. We rejoice. Look at that verse. For we are the circumcision. Well, the circumcision usually is a reference onto the Hebraic Jews and the covenant, of course. But we are the circumcision made without hands. That circumcision made without hands is the Lord Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is what is missing with the majority of Christianity. I would say about uh, 80 to maybe 90% of all that is Christian, um, 80 to 90% is exactly that. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Christians are taught today to have confidence in the flesh. They are. They don't say that with their lips, but by their fruits you shall know them. Go to a church building. <laughs> don't. Don't. Don't do that. But look at it. Look at it. Look at it for what it really is, people. Okay? Now, considering who is talking here, considering who is talking here, though I might have, uh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. This is Paul who I believe was on the road to be the next high priest. Okay? If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, <laughs> and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, Concerning zeal. And see, Paul's, who was at that time Saul, his zeal was misguided. But once the Lord got a hold of him and saved him and turned the murderer into a messenger. Oh, that's a good that, that that's a that's a good one. Um beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. But turn the murderer into a messenger. Okay. His zeal, that zeal that he had for what he thought was right, was pointed into the right direction and used of the Lord. I, I think that often about our enemies. I think that often about some of these Catholic people who have this unreasonable zeal for Satan and his church, Rome. Uh, if the Lord would save them, 
Remember, not at gunpoint. What that zeal could be used for, for the body of Christ, the church of the living God, for the saints. I, I, I do. I, I know it's kind of a fleeting, futile thought because, you know, God doesn't, unless you believe in the nonsense that some of these Calvinist guys preach, um, God doesn't force you to do anything. Sometimes it would be nice if he did, huh? Amen? Let's continue. Concerning zeal, persecuting the Christians. <laughs> persecuting the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. In Isaiah chapter 28, we've gone through this before, saints, but we're just nothing too heavy today. Yesterday, Sunday, the 10th, uh, was a day the Lord just took the scriptures and voila! <laughs> just like, boom, whoa! <laughs> this is part of it. So I'm sharing with you what the Lord has shared with me. Okay? There's uh, very minimal expository stuff here. Uh, that, um, I had hoped that today, you need to know this, um, I had hoped today would have been the day to do the lovely um, video on Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. Um, the Lord uh, just was like, wow, man. I need to be a little bit more diligent and I got every everything has been given it's just got to be structured and hopefully that will come this week but I wanted it to be today but not today this is a continuation of yesterday's video okay about warning you guys just because it what's the saying if it walks like a duck talks like a duck quack like a duck it's a duck and generally that is true in its sense. But when you got these people, the especially these infiltrator types, who get so close to the real thing, so close, they know, but never uh, come to the knowledge of the truth. They know what is expected. They know what to say. They know how to put the facade on. They know some with certain sects within Christianity. Um, they know the apparel is important. Okay, we've worked. this is something that needs to be hammered. It really does. Because we are supposed to be simple concerning evil, right? If it's wrong, according to scripture, it's wrong. Okay, simple. But see, the complexity of deception getting so, so, like right on the edge there. They, I mean, the little tippy toes are just pointing over the edge there of deception and, and deceiving so many people. Because it looks like a duck. Quacks like a duck. It walks like a duck. But it's a plastic decoy. How do you know? It takes time. Some are obvious. Some are not so. Some you got to watch for a while, unfortunately. Some get worse with age. And thank you to all of you who are doing that to give a good example and sample to not become like you have. Isaiah 28, verses 9 on to verse 13. I want to have this question rolling around in your head while we're going through this. How can someone read the authorized version of the scriptures every day and still be lost? How is that possible? I know when the Lord guided me onto himself through the Romans road, 
and broke my hide and tore me to shreds. To where I took my knees on a cold concrete floor at Papa Murphy's in Woodstick, Illinois, and cried out to the Lord, begged for his forgiveness, asked him to save me, covered in snot, and I had to get the, the door open to make pizza. Yeah. 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 But there are those out there. There are those out there who will read the scriptures in order to deceive. There are those out there who are very learned in the scriptures. There are. There are. But yet, they ain't saved. But yet, learned in the scriptures. I think the problem is, that's kind of rhetorical, but I think the problem is wonderfully illustrated here for us in Isaiah 28. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Knowledge is the result of wisdom. There are two wisdoms. There's the wisdom that is first, that comes from above, Pure, peaceable, easy to be entreated. And then there's a second wisdom. There is a second wisdom. There's only two wisdoms. Okay? The one that is of God. The one that is of, de of the devil. Earthly, sensual, devilish. The wisdom that is of man. Philosophy. The love of man's wisdom. Okay? There are only two wisdoms. One that is from above. And one that is here. Oh, what's... Oh, oh, um, um. Oh, what's that saying? As is above, so below. Bloop. There are two wisdoms. Okay, that that's that as a uh, as above, so below. That's uh, was Aleister Crowley who said that, and that's in the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the one wisdom that comes from God is above all. The wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish wants to encompass that wisdom that is from from above but lacking all the important nutrients that come from it and give you an imitation. Why is that? How is that? How do these people read the scriptures daily and get into in depth and even well videos and studies as they call them or sermons you know can the true come from the false? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Hold your place. That's this is not actually the main text that we're looking at. Go to Luke chapter ten. That's where we're going to be spending a lot of our time. Luke chapter ten, verse twenty-one. Uh, actually, actually, verses twenty on to verse twenty-one. Yes. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Don't get too high and high of yourself. Don't get too enamored with your own mystique, with your own aura, with your own ministry. <laughs> don't 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 get so full of yourself. Okay? Don't get so full of yourself. This is for our instruction in righteousness, okay? But rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. And see, people who are fleshly and carnal, who put everything in the appearance thereof, their focus is always on the wrong thing, isn't it? Well, obviously. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, in other words, don't think this is anything because of you. But rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent 
and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for, it's so, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Now, wisdom and prudence are attributed unto the fear of the Lord. Absolutely. But these guys that the Lord is making a mention of with this uh, reference here, okay, he's like, they came back and was like, Lord, even the devils are subject to us. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, good for you. Don't, don't think so highly of yourselves now. Right? Yeah, amen. But be rather more rejoicing in that you belong to me. And you don't rub that in people's faces either. Okay? Okay? And then he says here that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20. On to verse 24. And you can go ahead and uh, read the entire thing there for the context if you would like. I would suggest you do. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Wise and prudent in their own eyes. Hmm. Okay. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom. Which wisdom? Is it the wisdom of God? No. Keep reading. Knew not God. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom, not the wisdom of God, knew not God. I mean, come on. How could that be a reference on to the wisdom of God where it says world, the world, by wisdom, knew not God? How's No. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews, the Hebraic Jews, require a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Gentiles, foolishness. But unto them which are called, and that's not Calvinism, called, reference, way of the cross. Christ has called you the way of the cross. You don't boot the door and climb up some other way. Okay? That's what Christianity has done. Okay? Called. You're called the way of the cross. You go the way of the cross. That is the elect way. You are the elect when you go the way of the cross. Not this stupid Calvinism stuff. Okay? Because the foolishness of God... Okay, wait a minute. Did we have... Uh, Okay, but unto them, verse 24, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And verse 25, let's add, because the foolishness of God in the eyes of the world is wiser than men, and the weakness of God, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. God the Father, going to the bathroom, the weakness of God stronger than men how is God weak have him get some good enchiladas one night huh I know that's kind of crude to say that but think about it and there are these out there these Christians that make God flesh that flesh is God God was in flesh. I tell you that a lot. Okay? Because that when that aspect is expounded on and understood, then you get to see the enemy a little differently because of what they are focused on. Okay? Now, back to Isaiah uh, 28, verse 9 on to verse 13. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast and tie in and Peter is like uh, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Okay? For precept must be upon precept. 
precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little, okay? This is a method of what? Here a little, there a little. You wake up in the morning, read the scriptures, read the scriptures, okay? Read the scriptures because the Lord is the one who brings this to life. How many of you have been asked, it's like, why do you read and study the same book over and over and over all the time? Not just a book, even though it is a book. It's not just a book. This book is alive. The, it's paper and ink. Well, to you. But see, the Lord comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The Lord in you brings this to life. That's how that works. Okay? That's how that works. And unless now, lost people who do not have the Lord in them, the Lord can guide them onto himself through the reading of Scripture. He did it with me. He did it with many of you. Okay? Many of you. Alright? The Lord as a lost man, the Lord led me to himself through the Romans road. The very thing that I share with you is the way the Lord grabbed me out of Egypt. Okay? All right? All right? But here a little, there a little. Wake up in the morning. And people have said that, uh, have used that of me and my wife as examples. Um, like, well, Brad, I don't have the two to three hours like you do. To, or, or my wife, to spend in scripture, you know. Well, that, I, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Okay? The Lord had, you know, you know, what is he going to do? It's like, if I, if I will, he tarry till he come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Okay? The Lord has allowed me this time. To do these things to share with you. That's that's what this is. That's you know, that's what it is. But for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Okay. Don't don't be like, well, Brad, I don't spend two to three hours in the scriptures like you do, or your wife does. Okay, that's fine. But here a little and there a little, boy. Brother, sister. Wake up in the morning and read a proverb. Psalm and someone out of the New Testament. Be in Romans. Okay? Or in Timothy. Wherever. Wherever the Lord guides you. Okay? In the afternoon and at night before you go to bed. Read a little bit more. Okay? But see, here a little, there a little. The Lord still intends for us as saints to be in his word. That you cannot get away from. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. People who are dependent upon him. And not glorying in their flesh. Because they've been trained and you know, sat under their so and so or to whom he said, this is my rest, excuse me, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Hmm. See, in verse 9, weaned from the milk drawn from the breast. Okay? And of course, that's a reference on milk is for babes. And as you progress in your walk with the Lord and reading of Scripture, He's going to give you uh, pieces of meat until you finally get to the filet mignon and the, or the uh, T-bone steak. You know what I'm saying? Okay? All the while you wash it down with a little bit of milk, okay? But see, this first part of this is for those of us who what? We're weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. We're being fed the sincere milk of the word. Believe what we read. 
I believe it, really. Why aren't you living by it? Christians know that they're supposed to say that they believe in a resurrection. But a majority of the Christians that I have encountered, when you talk to them about that, they don't believe in a resurrection at all. They give lip service to it. But, now verse 13 is a shift. Okay, verses 9, 10, 11, and 12 are addressing those of us, those of us who depend on the word because the Lord in us brings the word to life. And we're getting more. The more we follow the Lord and the more we trust him, believe what is written. Okay? Believe what is written. But the word of the Lord was unto them. Unto who? Those who are not weaned from the milk are drawn from the breast. Those who are not dependent. Those who are self-sufficient. Now self-sufficiency is, a, yes, but when it comes to things in the matters of spiritually, it's you and the Lord studying this. When you start thinking that man is your uh, standard of rule, then you have Christianity. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Because it was mechanical animal just the just the reading of it without the Lord number one or without believing that he is and a rewarder of those who seek him diligently what he will do okay this is making sense to you I hope it is because this is actually pretty simple illustrated Luke chapter 10, verses 25 on to verse 24. And behold, a certain lawyer, a lawyer, someone who knows the law. Okay? In this context, it's not a divorce or whatever lawyer. The lawyer here in context is the one who knows the law. Okay? And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Now, as I talked about with a brother yesterday about this, some would point to this verse and say, See, it's relative. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Well, your truth is your truth and my truth. And no, that's not how that works. And that's not what this is. First of all, in verse 25, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Hmm. What shall I do? He said unto him, What is written in the law? The Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, he knew. But what was he asking? How readest thou? More along the lines of, <clears throat> okay, uh, how do you, how are you taking this? <laughs> okay, this man was speaking, this lawyer was speaking to truth personified. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. So absolute truth was there being spoken to and speaking on to this individual. And he's like, <laughs> Uh, how do you read? How, how readest thou? It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Does that make sense? And he answering, look at this. This is a lawyer. This is a lawyer. He knew. He knew what to say. A lot of Christians, they know what to say. And he answered. And he answering said, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Scriptural, accurate, truth, true, real answer. Yes. Amen. Amen. He gave the right response. He knew what he had to say because he was a lawyer. Okay? He said the mechanical thing. But how read his style was an answer. What do you mean? And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. Now you got to remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. The law is still binding. Faith and works. Don't believe these idiots who tell you it isn't. Okay? And he answered, and he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. Lawyer, you know what to say. This do, and thou shalt live. Faith and works. The law is still binding. Okay? And here is where how readest thou is answered. But he, willing to justify himself. Oh, just as if I, oh boy, there you go. Oh, don't judge me. God knows my heart. <laughs> but he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, <laughs> and who is my neighbor? Are we blind too? <laughs> who is my neighbor? Jesus answering, now, pay attention to this. I, you know, I, let's, let's read. And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. Priest. Now, that is a reference unto their Aaronic priesthood. Aaron came of the line of the Levites, but God specifically took Aaron, chose Aaron because Moses wanted a mouthpiece. And, uh, anyway, but he chose Aaron, the Aaronic priesthood. Okay? Priest. The priests were the ones who did, you know, the, the blessing, you know, uh, the Aaronic blessing. Okay, they were the ones who put the blood on the horns of the altar, dipping of the fingers and stuff like that. Okay? They were the they were the top of the chain of the class, you should say. Okay? I thank the uh, Father in heaven because you have revealed these things on the babes and hid them. I just I know I just did that backwards and revealed them up. It's in the same chapter here. Okay? So yeah, uh, verse twenty one. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, so it seemed good in thy sight. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. Not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise are called. was my neighbor. But this is a reference unto the Aaronic priesthood. Okay? Priest. And when he saw him, just saw him, sees. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So the, the big shot Aaronic priest goes to law, you know, putting the things on the altar onto him was given the priesthood, not the Jesuits. Okay? Saw this guy and passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite. Now remember, Aaron was of the tribe of Levi. But there was a distinction within that. The Levites were the ones who carried the tabernacle, who carried the stuff, 
they helped out Aaron and his sons. Okay, they had part in that ministry, but they weren't the priests. Well, you seek the priesthood too. Okay, they were the workers. They were the laborers. You know, it was the funnel thing. Aaron, you know, the priest and the, the Levites were the workers who did these things. Part of the ministry, but not the priest. Okay, all right. Here's the priest. Here were the Levites. Likewise, the Levite, when he was at the, at the place, came and looked on him. Now, look at verse 31. The priest, the hotshot priest, he saw the guy, just the Levite at least, looked on him. Now here's the priest. Okay. Here's the Levite. Oh. Hey. Oh. Be warmed and filled. And walk off. Just believe and receive. And yeah, you'll be fine. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw, him, he had compassion on him. And went to him. He did what the priest did. He saw him. Okay? He had compassion. The Levite, what does it say there? Looked on him. Oh, you poor thing. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive you. will do fine. Hmm. But the Samaritan, he saw, had compassion on him, and went to him. Got his hands dirty. Got his hands dirty. A lot of people like to, especially when it comes into the regards of replacement theology, like heretic twits like uh, Stephen Anderson and the Roman Catholic Church, they will make the big to-do about the kindred of the Samaritan versus the kindred of the priest and the Levites and about the Samaritans that they were mixed and that kind of stuff. That is a legitimate thing to speak upon. Yes, that is. There is a legitimacy to that. Okay. Also keeping in mind that this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. But what I'm suggesting to you is, for our instruction in righteousness, the Samaritan, more so as the, you got the priest, you got the Levite, and you got the Samaritan. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. It baffles me <laughs> to no end why people want, were so gung-ho to, to get this thing into a denomination, and now that it is, they've become the exact embodiment of what they were trying to protest against. Why can't you people see that? Why? What is it with you? And trying to be the separate entity, you've become the very thing that you were trying to separate yourself from. I don't get it. I, I understand. But I, I don't get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, again. Verse 26, under the close. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. And look at what these Christians, all of the denominations are doing to the people who they, they listen to and put on pedestals. You have become the very embodiment of what it is you claim to be against, you King James Bible-believing Christians. Okay? You have been. You have become the very thing that you claim to be separate from. 
But then again, you know, you know what to say. And this is for all Christians. Well, not all of them, because a lot of Christianity is ignorant and willfully ignorant. But there are those out there who do know. But in a general sense, uh, you you call yourself a saved individual, a Christian, huh? Huh? You know what to say. You know what to say. But to justify yourself, huh? For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh glory in his presence. There you go. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and, re and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. See, what does all of Christianity do? Especially when it comes to the leaders that they like to edify. But a certain Samaritan, the bottom of the rung, the little guy, As he journeyed, came where he was. When he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. How, you know, the, some of these guys, you know, the, the, the thing you might have seen of the guy taking a selfie that with the hell phone of him giving a homeless guy a ten dollar or a hundred dollar bill you know on youtube there are these videos that you can see of these guys giving homeless people like 500 bucks cash and the guy yeah, and he goes and hugs the guy they have their reward it's 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 romantic it's sentimental it pulls at your heartstrings but don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing and vice versa okay you know, have you seen those videos? They're heart-wrenching. The one guy, a homeless guy eating a pizza, and the one guy comes by, it's like, hey, can I have some? And the homeless guy shares it with them. And, uh, you know, the homeless guy sharing with the guy who's well-to-do, wearing the fancy stuff, and the guy sits next to him, okay, with the camera rolling. Don't miss that. With the camera rolling. They have their, you can find this thing. Um, and they're, they're sitting there, and then the guy, you know, talks to him, and then he hands the homeless guy an envelope with a lot of money in it. And then he walks off, and then the homeless guy, of course, weeping, bawling. It's like, oh my goodness, this guy just, you know, I can get a shower and that kind of stuff. It's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. But see, that guy who did that has his reward. You saw it. You were touched. And you know what? You might be even um, might want to even go and do the same thing, right? But is it being done because of a genuineness that comes from a heart that is concerned, or because you know that's what is expected of you, and you're in the camera? This, this topic is not going to go away. It's, it's just not. It can't. It can't. Because this is how so many of the people are being deceived. Because, hey, sounds like a duck, walks like a duck, even cracks like a duck. And went to him and bound him up and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Sometimes you got to get your hands dirty. Because fruit, you know, it looks good. Sounds good. You know, when you bite into it, it kind of stuff, something like that. 
but then you grab it and it's all mushy and all the gunk comes out of it. And on the morrow when he prepared, and on the morrow when he prepared, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? Willing to justify himself. Well, who's my neighbor? Not many wise, not many prudent. This lawyer, you know, oh, the priest, oh, he just looked at him. Levite, oh, he, you know, he looked down on him at least. You know, looked at, hey, leave and receive, buddy, you'll be fine. Yeah. But the Samaritan. The kindred angle, that's a valid one, sure. But especially with what we're dealing with today and what we're seeing, you know, God is the God of the little guy. And all you people that are so gung-ho about trying to make something acceptable that was never acceptable in the first place and trying to separate yourselves sensual not having a spirit and making, it, making this thing into your own little comfort zone... You guys are exactly the same. Why can't you understand that? Now you get your buddies behind you doing rah, rah, rah about all this nonsense that you do. Missions. Talk to me about missions, boy. <laughs> I don't know, but I, for some reason, the way some of these guys are, it's like, how would you handle if you let a grown man snot all over you? Crying, huh? How, how would some of you, like, oh, I gotta go get tested. And he said, he that shoot mercy on him. Well, yeah, that's the right answer. Then said Jesus unto him, Go! Do thou likewise. One thing thou lackest, go sell all that thou hast, and go and give to the poor, and come, take up your cross, and follow me, and you'll have treasure in heaven. But the rich young ruler went away very sorrowful. Why? Because he had so much stuff. I'm bradizing this, obviously. How hardly will they who have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Spiritual. Because remember, the kingdom of heaven is all works. Don't, don't believe these guys who are deceiving you. It's not, it's not by grace through faith. It's not by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven. Because you could be able to see Jesus on the throne, people! Get that through your head. Okay? Alright? We who at least point you to rightly dividing the word of truth, we're not the crazy ones. We're not. Some are crazy. Yes, they are. But, you know, you rightly dividing this book save you guys a whole lot of trouble and probably open your eyes to a whole lot of the nonsense that Christianity is. One thing you lack. See, the Jesus of Scripture is like that. One thing you lack. He's not going to tiptoe around you. He's the Father. He's God forbid. And he did the same thing here with this lawyer. Knew what to say, knew how to respond. And the Lord used the parable of the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan. Top, middle, bottom. And of course the Samaritans, you know, were not looked upon all favorably. Okay? Like I said, the kindred angle of that is a valid one, yes. 
for the death, burial, and resurrection, and that comes into, you can tie make tie-ins with the time of Jacob's trouble and stuff like that. Yes, you can. We're not looking at it for this aspect, for instruction in righteousness, okay? There's a difference there, okay? Now let's continue. Verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Sat at his feet and heard his word. Okay? But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, get the picture. Lord, maybe even with the head bobble there. Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. One thing you lack. The, this lawyer guy he was cumbered about a lot of things, wasn't he? Well, he was a lawyer. He obviously was well read in the scriptures and studied because he knew exactly here how to respond to the question. But what was missing? But he willing to justify himself. <laughs> but he willing to justify himself. In verse 28, the Lord touches it before he even says it. Okay? This do, and thou shalt live. Simple. Is, hey, you want it simple, right? There's simple for you right there. And then the dude says, then him willing to justify himself, and who is my neighbor? See, the Lord put the finger on it before the guy even said it. One thing he lacks. And he gives the beautiful illustration of the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan. And, again, there are crazies out there who go to this to try to tell us that <laughs> the church has replaced this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. That is replacement theology. That is heresy. Uh, I think even Stephen Anderson did with this verse to try to tell you that, see, the, the Samaritans, you see, the church has replaced Israel. <laughs> no, that's, no, no, not at all, not at all. Okay, let's continue. Verse 41. All right. <laughs> Martha was cumbered about much serving. You got to go to the right church, okay? Find a Bible that suits you. Get under, uh, get to a new Testament local church. New Testament local church. Go to church. Uh, if you're a saint, a saved individual, you are the church. I know that, but get your big, fat, hairy butt out of the way. That's the problem. Your big, fat, hairy butt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay? You got you know, you got to get, uh, got to go to a cemetery school if you want to share with people what the Lord shares with you. Okay, you need to get books by written by so and so and so and so in this commentary set and all this stuff. Cumbered about much things, about much serving. Hmm. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Catholics also, I've heard and encountered, they like to tie that into their Mary, which is not the Mary of Scripture. Okay? Hell cries Mary. Oh, and incidentally, uh, for you Catholics and your Mary, okay? Take offense, take a gate. A Catholic, to hell with your Mary. 
Yeah, that's right. You heard me right. To hell with your Mary. Your Mary is not the scriptural Mary. Your Mary is the Queen of Heaven. Talked about in Jeremiah chapter 44. Go find it. That's your Mary, Catholic. To hell with your Mary. Take offense and a gate. Okay? Come on. Anyway, let's continue. Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. A lot of people come to this about and focus on the serving. It's like, like Jesus is saying, just give us a sandwich. You're missing it. Could you encompass that into that? Sure. But you, you, you're missing the point. You're missing the point within the context of what we just looked at. You're missing the point. These Christians, not all of them. <laughs> surely not all of them. But there are those Christians out there. They know what to say. They know where to go. They're learned. They read. Okay? They're on a uh, New Testament Bible believer and preaching. Okay? Some of them go to the buildings. They have all this stuff. They're cumbered about much serving. But one thing is needful. One thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now, see, go to Acts. Acts chapter 4 real quick. I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves, but Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Just one verse. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now see, the enemies of our Lord can imitate that, that they have been with Jesus. They can imitate that. But there's only so far their imitation can go. Just like with the magicians of Egypt. There's only so far, there's a level, there's a depth that they can only reach. Why? Because that which is supposed to be there in a saint is lacking. Hence, they are not saints. They're mere Christians. <laughs> They're mere Christians. They ain't saints. Saints are saved people. Christians are religious. And you know, you all claim that you ain't religious, but in making your own little denomination, picking your own people who you will exalt, um, you've made yourself just like you've made yourself of the number. Bravo! Seriously. Bravo! To you pretentious people. Bravo to you. My hat, I'm not wearing one. My hat off to you. You did what you wanted to do. We as saints are not supposed to be taken seriously, are we? The world mocks us. But when you go out of your way to try to make yourselves to look like you're something special to be taken seriously, we're, we're the small. We're the despised. Okay? Look at Paul. Why was Paul taken seriously? Because... And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You know all the floggings and all the whoopings and the beatings that Paul took? It wasn't going to get him. It was trying to get what was in him out of him. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Okay? What's lacking in Christianity is the Lord. They have a Christ. They do. But it's not the Christ of the Scriptures. And again, this trap of, you know, 
lost people taking you seriously. Okay? Well, Brad, you said, well, take you serious. This, this is what is to be taken seriously, the scriptures. Okay? This is what's to be taken seriously. All right? And if you are called to a position such as this, we're all in the Ministry of Reconciliation, okay? All right? You're taken seriously by how you expound the Word, how you live the Word, okay? And also rightly dividing, of course. See, the Lord is the one who is to be taken serious. Man, you know, I don't really care if you take me seriously or not. Let's say it the Scripture. Let's say it the Scripture. The minute you start trying to impress men by your acknowledgments or that what you have done rather than who comes out, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And see, when that's not there. And go now, go to Luke 11. Go to Luke 11. We want verses 45 on to verse 52. The lawyers, the ones who know, but the one thing that is needful wasn't there. This go do. He says it to him in two variations twice in Luke 10. Okay? Verse 37. And he said, He that shewed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. One thing is needful. This lawyer guy, he had all the other stuff. But the one thing he lacked was what? The Lord. But willing to justify himself. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Verse 28, and he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, <laughs> this do and thou shalt live. And who is my neighbor? How can someone read this all the time and still be lost? Mechanical. Domo arigato, Mr. Robato. There may be something grievously wrong with your reading. When you read this, do, do you, it's like, Lord, I, I've, I've read this a few times. A few times. Lord, let me have eyes to see, ears to hear. Let me look at this with fresh eyes as if I'm a babe. Show me something. Teach me. Show me the reflections of holding the jewel to the light. And that mechanicalness is something that comes with longevity that we as saints need to be on guard against. Young brother, mark that. Mark that. There are plenty of examples of those out there who, the longer they go, they become familiar. Now, we ought to know the scriptures, yes. But when you take this kind of haphazard, almost flippancy of familiarity, that becomes dangerous. That becomes very dangerous. The Lord is the one who makes this come to life. Okay? There are many out there who can read the scriptures every day for hours on end even maybe and still be lost. Because like we read in Isaiah 28, to them it was line upon line, precept upon precept, that they might be taken and fall backwards. Why? Because there was no life in it. There's no life in it. Even though this is a living book, comparing spiritual things with spiritual you know, when the Lord asks, okay, when the Lord asks, <laughs> how readest thou? Truth itself, himself, how readest thou? It's not relativity, 
it's like, okay, there's something. How do you read that? Okay, that's right. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> and it's like, and who is my neighbor? It's like, dude, you've missed it, even though you said rightly. Even though you said it and it's right there, you've missed it. Luke 11, verses 45 on to verse 52. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. Hey, well, I know the law. I know how to answer, right? I got all the outside stuff. But one thing is needful. <laughs> And he said, Woe unto you, unto you also, ye lawyers! For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born. And ye yourselves, look at that, touch not the burdens with one of your fingers, just like we saw with the priest and the Levites. Oh, you talk a good game. Don't you? I wonder how some of these YouTube guys. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. I wonder how would they would react if a brother came from nowhere out to their place. I need you. Can you help me? I, I, I need to be with. I need to be around other brethren. I wonder how a lot of these people would react. Imagine going up to Mr. Charles Lawson. Hmm? Knocking on his door and having a bowl of soup with him or something. <laughs> How about that, that Gene Kemp guy? How about the guy from Maine? <laughs> Stephen Anderson? <laughs> I personally think that Mr. David Daniels, if he's still alive even, he looked kind of sickly the last time I was in his video. But um, David Daniels might be a guy who, if, you know, he'd probably like, oh, sure, come on in. Maybe. And again, he's a little too nice, you know. But anyway, let's continue. Let's read that again. He said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born. Ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly, ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore, said, therefore also said the wisdom of God. The, Levite, the priest, the Levite, and the, Mer the Samaritan. The wisdom of God. In that hour, verse 21 in uh, chapter 10. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, so it seemed good in thy sight. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, as we already read in 1 Corinthians, not many mighty, not many uh, noble, not many wise. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound them. You want to be part of something. Don't you know you're accepted in the beloved? Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this particular, specific, our God is a God of specificity, okay? generation from the blood of Abel 
unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this specific generation that the Lord there in context is mentioning. How is it required? Well, the Messiah, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, was right there. And they rejected him. Woe unto you, lawyers! For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. Got to go to a Jesuit trained cemetery school. Got to buy the, the complete online set of instruction. And see, as a saint in John chapter 16, one verse, John chapter 16, just one verse. See, today when you come to the Lord on His terms and He saves you and seals you, once saved, always saved, you have the Lord living within you. Okay? God uses man. Yes, he does. Absolutely he does. But see, 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, capital S, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He sh will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me. He shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you. Christianity doesn't have Lord. John chapter 5 verses 39 on to verse 47. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Where are you sending them? I'm sending them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not me, by the way, but you know, when the Lord uses me, uses you, and you got the scriptures, that's what's happening. You are being used as a vessel of the Lord with the scriptures, pointing to the Lord through the scriptures unto that individual. Because the scriptures point to the Lord Jesus Christ. But see, when you're not even trying to look that way, but just read it in an absence of number one, the Lord, and number two, believing what is said, it's like they read the scriptures and it's like, okay, Again, the thing about the resurrection. You read about the resurrection in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But yet, a majority of Christians don't believe in an actual literal resurrection of the dead. But they know that they're supposed to because they're Christians. The miracles of the Exodus. Okay? The plagues and whatnot. That's what it says. Do you believe that? Well, of course I believe that. See, they know what to say. But then, when you talk with these people, it comes out rather easily. It's like, no, you don't. With their mouth, they shoot much love. This is why the aspect of time that we do not have, I'll give you that, is necessary for a lot of these people because the deception is so subtle now. So, the lawyer again, the lawyer again, knew what to say. He had all those things lined up in a row, but that one thing that was needful was the one thing he lacked. 
and they are they which testify of me. Now, if you're reading the scriptures void of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, you're, you couldn't read anything better. <laughs> Absolutely, amen. Amen. I, as a lost man, the Lord was, come here, <laughs> come here. See that? That's you. You're in trouble. Okay? I was seeking. I was seeking. I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't want to be the man I was. But I knew no matter what I could do, I couldn't change it on a permanent basis, and it would only last until the next, next fleshly thing come along. There was something that I was lacking, and there was only one thing that was needful. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have eternal life. Again, you, your, your Jesus is on the cross, huh, Catholic? And it's not finished. There's something you still got to do. Go to church. Be there when the doors are open, right? I receive not honor from men. <laughs> Dude, come on. Come on. Look at the Charles Lawsons. Look at the Robert Breakers. Look at the Gene Kims. Okay? Look at these guys. Look at these guys. But I know you. Not relationally. God knows everybody. Yes, he does. But not relationally. Like, you know, uh... Dialogue, monologue is pa 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 pa. The dialogue is. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name. Jehovah, oops. Jehovah saves. Jesus, Jehovah saves. Jesus. Only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. <laughs> what was that idiot Gip? Uh, that crazy guy. Um, it's, it's, oh, it's Emmanuel. That's a description. Not among us. But his name is Jehovah Saves. The same Sam Gip who says, God uses easy believism. Uh, he's right. He's right. Easy believism is a hand me over for someone who doesn't want the real Jesus or the real truth. Right about that. Mm, right about that. <laughs> Sam get. Woohoo! But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Yehovah save. Jehovah saves. Jesus. Christ. The anointed one, the Mashiach. Jehovah saves the Christ, Mashiach, the anointed one. Or the anointed one, Jehovah saves Christ Jesus. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Luther, Calvin, Arthur. Rahman. Bullinger. Schofield. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Right here. Right here, the, that Christianity seeks honor one from another. Because if they were truly seeking the honor that cometh from God only, then what, what are you doing in a building? Hmm? What are you doing in a building? Why have you created something? Why were you part of creating something 
that has just morphed itself into the very thing that you are trying to avoid anyway and you've become just like everyone else. Why is that? Because you seek honor from men. Don't take me seriously. Take the scriptures seriously. That's why, uh, that's why it's like, read along with me. Okay? Read along with me. There are brethren who do. Praise the Lord for that. Because those who do, usually um, the one young brother will correct me on things or like bring things up to me that are not the main to topic, but usually the things that get said on the side. It's like, for example, a little rabbit for you, a uh, video will be about whatever topic and there was something that was said on the offshoot, but a brother who is following along be like, hey, Brad, you, you know, you said this, it's like, and I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. It's like, well, let's talk about that. It's like, oh, oh. okay. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Verse 46. Here it is. Here it is. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Now, heretics like to come to this part, portion of scriptures and say, put the scripture away like a uh, Bible is mark of beast, them idiots. And they're right, the Bible is the mark of the beast. The, no, no, it's not. But what they were saying, excuse me. No. no. Uh, the mark of the beast is the, the, my, the chip in the head and the hand excuse me for that mess up but what they were saying is that the bible is not to be trusted bible is mark of beast that's their channel name they're right the bibles are not supposed to be trusted the scriptures are okay like i said the head goes faster than the mouth the mouth than the head sometimes okay the mark of the beast is in the right hand or in the forehead okay that's the mark of the beast okay it's not the steel of the jesuit poniard or anything like that Okay, what I meant by that was Bibles are not supposed to be trusted. Your NIV, your LSD version, you know, or LBS or whatever it is, <laughs> the MacArthur version. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. And uh, Hebrews 11, which uh, hopefully will also be this week, Nothing too in-depth, nothing, it doesn't need to be, because the one is like, well, they bring up the faith that's talked about in Hebrews 11. Hebrews is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And the faith, when you look at what is being talked about, is in what's going to be coming. But anyway, uh, where is that? Verse 6 in Hebrews 11. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, he is, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? He is, present tense, alive, okay? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. See, the Lord is actually uplifting the scriptures. And see, the, the Christians who read Bibles, okay, distinction. The authorized version is the scriptures, King James Version. This is the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, okay? This is the real thing. Anything else is just a collection of books. <laughs> All right. Yes, this has a collection of books, but we need distinction nowadays. And again, trying to create distinction out of your own doing, you have become the very thing that you are trying to separate yourselves from. 
New King James Bible believing Christians. The Lord is uplifting the scripture. Do you believe what you read? Now see, you're supposed to say yes, right? But do you really? The majority of the Christians that we encounter, you talk to them about the actual literal, they know what to say, but they don't believe in an actual literal resurrection. I've talked to Christians who don't even believe in the things of the Exodus. Well, they, science. Science falsely so called. As a lost man being brought to my end, the only hope that I had was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he led me onto the scriptures. Okay? He led me to him through his word. And I believe every word of the scriptures. Because that was what led me onto him. And now that he's here with me always. He brings this to life. That's how some of these people can read the scriptures all the time, but yet still be lost. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. It's, it's full of wonder, but it happens. It happens. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? If, if you don't believe, for example, the just an example, the things about the Exodus. Well, I, I, I believe that they were just you know, natural things. They were done in the natural. Yes, but it was the Lord, supernatural, that did them. Don't, don't, don't lose that distinction. Don't lose that distinction. Yes, the miracles of the, the signs, the plagues of the Exodus account, in Exodus, the book of Exodus, they were done in the natural, but they were done from that which is supernatural. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father himself. And see, trying to remove that from the equation and yet keep all the other stuff. Yesterday when I, uh, in my morning devotional reading with the Lord, I hardly got out of Luke 10. Hardly. <laughs> but um, that's going to be it for this little video. You believe this? You, you say you do. You say you do. We know, we know that we're supposed to, right? But do you really? There's only three that know the answer to that. The Lord, you, and the devil. Which one is it? Going to get this video uploaded. Um... Like I said, I just wanted to share this with you. Um, uh, hopefully this might help. Hopefully the Lord be glorified and magnified. Thank you for watching. We love you. We will see you in the next video. Don't forget to keep our dear brother Jeff Jones in prayer. Um, he really needs it. He's um, going through some very painful physical things right now. Um, oh brother. please keep him in your prayer so, that's it for that one. love you and we'll see you in the next video